I hate Carl. No, I do. He's brutal. I mean, there's nothing good about Carl. He's absolutely useless. In fact, even, even when people talk about him, it, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Speaking his name is offensive to me because it gives him power. I mean, if he didn't exist, it would make my life a lot easier. Just thinking about him makes me anxious and nervous. Sometimes I don't go out of the house because I might see Carl. In fact, he stops me from doing a lot of things that I want to do. Nothing to learn from Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl's not my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Carl's actually the personification of failure. Ah, now I'm not such a jerk anymore, am I? <laughs> what is it about failure, this word, that elicits such a negative reaction from people? When I told my friends and family I was coming to TEDx, they were excited and they said, what are you going to speak on? And I said, failure! And most of them stopped what they were doing and went, oh, is everything okay? Are you all right? Why would you go and talk to people about this? I thought, what is with this word? It reminded me of the Lion King when the hyenas are talking and they talk about Mufasa. And then they shudder, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Say it again, failure, 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 right? And then there was people who I told I was going to talk about failure and they said, awesome. And those were the people who were the most successful, joyful, fulfilled, action-oriented people that I knew. And I thought, well, why is it that failure has such a negative reaction for some people? And I realized that failure really stops us from trying so many new things. I mean, how many times have we said we're going to try something new and someone says, but aren't you afraid that's not going to work out? Well, I can think of a couple times when failure has been a massive blessing in my life. A couple relationships that failed that would have been better if they failed earlier, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, we can't know before we start something whether or not it's going to be a sure bet and a success. Unless, of course, you're psychic, but none of us here are. Actually, maybe some of you are. In which case, I'm sorry, but you already knew that, so. We can't know what's going to be successful before we start, and we can't stop ourselves from starting something just because we think that there may be a chance that we fail. If we only engage in things that we can be sure of, we limit ourselves to a tiny fraction of what we have the potential to achieve. When I was in University of Alberta, I played on the soccer team, Go Pandas. And every year we had to do tryouts, and we would do a certain test called the beep test. And basically we would run back and forth from pylon to pylon to a succession of beeps that would get faster and faster and faster. And they would record our level and move on with the tryouts. And the highest I ever got was level eight. And then in my third year, our coach, Tracy David, said, every person who wants to be on this team must get to at least level 10 in order to continue on in the tryouts. Now, had I just gone on previous information, I had never gotten past level 8. In fact, I thought level 8 was the best that I could achieve. I should have just said, well, there's a chance I might not get to level 10. I guess I'm done playing soccer in university. <laughs> Sweep it under the rug. Sounds ridiculous to say, but we do that all the time in our lives. How many times has the, the fear of failure stopped you from trying something new, from quitting your job to become an entrepreneur, from traveling around the world, telling somebody how you really feel, from something as simple as dancing? I mean, I go to socials, weddings, I love to kick up my heels, and I'll say to people, let's go dance. They go, oh, I can't go on the dance floor, I don't know how to dance. We all know how to dance, you just go out there. If it's stopping you from getting on the dance floor, there's a problem. Some of us aren't very good dancers, but we can all dance, right? <laughs> so if we're basing what our potential is based on what we know we've done in the past, we would have never learned how to walk, how to talk, how to ride a bike, how to drive a car. We can't base our present potential based on our past experience. Now, when it came to the tryouts, every person miraculously on the team got to level 10 and then instantly collapsed on the floor. But we got to continue tr on the tryouts. It just goes to show that sometimes we can't know what we can have success in. We can't know what's in the unknown until we go and give it a try. I'm also an actor. You may have seen me on such riveting television commercials as the bankapproved.ca commercial. 
I do acting for film and television, commercials, online, and one thing stays the same for all of them, I must audition for everything that I do. And if any of you haven't auditioned before, let me tell you, it's a very nerve-wracking experience. You walk into a room full of people whose job it is to judge you. And you don't know what they want, sometimes they don't know what they want. All you can do is take what they've given you and make something brilliant with it. And acting just like in life is most brilliant when the biggest risks are taken. But you can't walk into an audition room and say, this is a great script. <laughs> I would be really good at this part. <laughs> and if you can guarantee that I'm going to get the part, I'll audition for you. They would look at you like you're crazy. They can't know if you're great for this role until you do something and show them something. You have to take the risk in order to have the opportunity to succeed. You can't tell them, well, it's a waste of my time to try if I'm not sure I'm going to succeed at this role. That's just not the way it works. So why is it that we stop ourselves from engaging in something that we think is so important before we start? It's because we have a massive fear of this word, failure. Why? Failure is a way to master our skills. It's the route towards success. I used to work as a telemarketer. I know you're all jealous. <laughs> I used to work as a telemarketer for a business development bank. And the first day I got in there, I realized how much rejection and failure is involved in a job like this. My first three calls made me want to cry and quit my job. The first call I got through partway through my spiel, and the person hung up the phone. Fail. The second call, I got through my whole spiel, then the person yelled at me and hung up the phone. <laughs> Fail. And then my third call, I got through my entire spiel and I heard silence. Then the person said they were answering the phone for the recently deceased. Failure. After those three calls, I went back home and thought, I don't want to go back in. When I came in the next day, I stalled and talked to people on the way to my desk. When I finally got to my desk, I rearranged everything to make sure it was all feng shui. And I thought, I should probably check my emails just in case something big has happened in the world of telemarketing and I don't know about it yet. And then by that time, it was time for lunch, so I went for lunch. The point is, I didn't do any failing, but I also didn't get any closer to succeeding. It wasn't until I realized that my employer didn't care how many times I got rejected. All they cared about was the successes. And I couldn't get to those successes by being so scared of failing that I didn't call anybody. When I became comfortable with this idea, then I started to excel. Every no and hang up I got was a stepping stone towards getting that yes. I'm not saying that I liked failure. But when you become comfortable with it, it takes away that limiting power it has over you when you fear it. Some people say, well, failure is a necessary evil. And I disagree. I think failure is necessary, but not evil. And if we can take away that negative stigma from it, we'd be more creative and more innovative with the way that we live our lives. When things are important, we have to take action, no matter what the risk involved is. It's like having Carl have the keys to my apartment when I'm locked out. I can't pretend that failure or Carl doesn't exist. I can't look at him and say, no, I'm cool, I'm just going to stand over here. It's cold, I'm going to complain about it. But I'm not going to go see Carl. He's useless. Talk to the man, he's holding your keys, people. Those are the keys to success, and if we can engage in failure in a comfortable manner, we can find success faster, more joyfully, more creatively. And that's the road to our success. We've got to be willing to go there. It creates a, a better life for us, more creativity when we are. So the idea isn't to set out with a pre preconceived idea of what success or what our potential is, because we're limited. We only know what we've known. We can dream and we can think of big things, but until we take that first step forward, we're not going to find success. The more that we can be comfortable with it, the less limiting it's going to be. I'm sure that most of the people you know who are the most skillful, the most successful, the most engaging, have found failure at some point in their lives. So if we can elim eliminate the negativity that we associate with failure, we'll be more creative. We'll be on the dance floor doing those crazy moves that no one gets. 
We'll be okay with hearing no when we're calling people as a telemarketer. We'll be excited to try something new that we've never done before. Carl's not that bad. <laughs> Imagine if we can get comfortable with Carl, sit down with him, and listen to what he has to say. Take something from it, maybe hold his hand. Maybe he's the love of our life and we've just been avoiding him the entire time. So my message today is, what if we became comfortable with the idea of failing and use that as a catapult towards success through creativity, innovation, and increasing our potential and opportunity? Take action, fail brilliantly, and then learn from that failure. I actually kind of feel bad about the way I talked about Carl now. I should probably go and make amends with him. Thanks for listening. I'm Aisha Alpha.